space coconut. Okay, let's talk about the ghost face. Let alone his name is stupid right now, he should just be the ghost, right? So from now on, I'm just going to refer to him as the ghost because that's much, much better. By now, you, all of you already know what problems he has. I don't think he's too weak, but in my opinion, he's one step lower than the Wraith uh, since he basically plays the same way. The Wraith goes invisible, can wander around the map until they locate survivors, and then attack them after uncloaking. The Ghost goes into stealth mode and can wander around the map until they locate survivors, or survivors locate him. He's able to directly attack survivors right after or while stealthing. If survivors locate the Wraith, he has no choice but to uncloak and chase them. If survivors locate the Ghost before he gets knock knocked out of stealth, he has no choice but to chase them. If he can't see or find the survivor that um, unstealthed him, well then he's just gotta wander around the map with a terror radius. The Wraith can't attack directly out of invisibility and has to uncloak to do so. Without add-ons, the Wraith alerts the survivors, giving them time to get away. The Ghost can directly attack from stealth and immediately after being knocked out of stealth. The Ghost is designed to be sneaky, but he's so easy to see and knock him out of stealth that he can't be used the way the devs intended. They built far too many counters and warnings into the Ghost because the devs don't believe that their survivor players can overcome the challenges of a strong killer. Just look at all the complaints about Nurse. The pig has the same problem that's never been adjusted and it's basically been ignored since her release. She announces that she's attacking when she's using her ambush, completely removing the entire purpose of that particular power. It's in it, its name. Ambush implies a surprise. Hey, I'm going to attack you now. <laughs> that is not an ambush. The strong killer players have adapted past this handicap by using the ambush in a way that the devs didn't intend. During a chase or a loop to get in a hit, to mind game, to go back and forth, to switch directions. Ardita is one of my more favorite examples of this because he's the first person I saw do this. And um, yeah, you can't use it the way it's intended. I would argue that the dev's decision to give survivors this warning takes away the fear of going against the pig, not knowing if she's going to attack at any given moment, forcing a survivor to be vigilant while they're doing whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah, she can sneak up on survivors on certain maps to get close enough for a hit, after a relatively short chase, but if you watch survivor gameplay against the pig, you'll see that there's no surprise or fear from an ambush. We can move on to our traps where the timer is so long and it's so easy to remove that survivors really have no fear of having it on. It's just a minor inconvenience on the same level as being injured. On a similar level, the ghost is designed to be stealthy. But the devs have made him so loud and given survivors so many warnings that he's gone into stealth mode that they've effectively told players not to play him the way they designed him to be played. Their design decisions don't surprise me anymore. We can expect every killer from now on to have one or several of these problems. Their power is weak when used the way it was designed, forcing players to use them a different way, just like what happened with the Legion. The Legion was designed to attack and disrupt several survivors at once, but his power didn't accommodate that, so tunneling became the way of the Legion. Their power is hamstrung by survivors directly, just like the Plague and the Ghost. The Plague's ability, the Corrupt Purge, is only active if a survivor decides to cleanse. Being sick offers no incentive... Uh, that's not the right word. Being sick doesn't inflict the survivor with any kind of penalty so they can continue the match as normal without any hindrances of any kind. The plague can have everybody sick and everybody in broken and because of the nature of the loops and the game in general they can still get gens done and get out of the match before the plague has anything to do about that. It was pretty interesting when I was uh, when I woke up this morning I uh, saw a, pl uh, a post about the plague and how Yannick actually said that, um, well, I'll just read the quote here. Hello, we are reluctant at the moment at modifying her. First, we have other killers who are higher in the list for modification slash balance needs. Second thing, our stats show that she is top t top killer. 
4K at rank 1. It seems that once you've mastered her, she can be extremely effective. She definitely has a high skill curve. And I think the problem that he doesn't get here, uh, and that I think the devs in general don't understand, is that whether they can... A, a player, a, a, a killer player with any amount of skill, can go through a match without using a killer's power and get a 4k. You can go through his trapper, never pick up or set a single trap and get a 4k. You can do the same with Wraith. You can do the same with the clown and er any other killer, uh, any other uh, um, normal movement speed killer. Actually, I guess it's debatable. You might be able to get a 4k with uh, um, some of the slower killers as well. Maybe. I'm not sure. But the point is, is that whether or not she gets a 4k isn't the issue. That isn't what makes her strong or weak. People currently get um, 4Ks with Freddy at rank 1, and you're they're reworking him, right? And they're reworking him because of the outcry from us. So instead of, instead of this nonsense, what they obviously don't understand is that we're not talking about whether or not she can get a 4K. We're talking about taking the power to use her power <laughs> away from the survivors and putting it more into um, the plague's hands. The easiest way to do this would be to give them a thanatophobia effect while they're sick. The more survivors who are sick, the harder things are going to be. Or maybe the maybe the an action speed slowdown like they did for Freddy when they were in in the dream in the dream world. They did stuff slower. If they're sick, you're not running at full capacity. Especially when you're throwing up like that. There's no way you're doing stuff the the, the way you could normally. Skill checks are going to be more difficult. Uh, working on the things is going to be slower. Your movement is going to be slowed. I also don't understand why they don't slow down while they're throwing up. I mean, if, if you've ever, if you were throwing up like that, you're not running at full speed. You are not. You know, whatever, whatever it is, while sick, the survivors need something to punish them for being sick. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's just a, it's just an interesting effect. I'm just going to go on with the list. Their power doesn't help them in a chase, or it's deliberately weaker during a chase, sort of like the Legion's um, pallet vault. It's slower, and it's obviously slower, and the Legion can't really catch up to a survivor during that. And even if they wanted to, um, his power doesn't down them. He stabs them with a knife, but they don't get hurt. They don't get downed. They don't get injured. But he stabbed them with a knife. Whatever. Uh, their power is too weak when used without purple add-ons. The Trapper, the Wraith, the Clown. I'm sure there are others. Um, killers who are really only do well against better survivors once they're using those add-ons. There are some killers who don't need add-ons, and these are the killers that have managed to be actually balanced. Uh, the Spirit, the Nurse, Hillbilly, I hear. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, debatably, the Hag can be played without add-ons at a reasonably high tier of course you know ice I'm, I'm i need to back that up still but whatever i wish i had more time to play <laughs> but until the killers can be viable without add-ons and then their add-ons just tweak how they play i think myers is a really good example of this myers without add-ons can do just fine he can do just fine, but once you do the scratched mirror and you get into the right map and stuff, his his gameplay his his playstyle changes completely, and he becomes almost a different killer. Why is it so difficult to make a killer good without add-ons, and then create add-ons that make them play a different way? They tried to do this with the hag, but <laughs> that's stupid, and laughable. Anyway. Uh, back to the list. I'm, I'm, I'm ranting. I'm talking while I'm doing the script. But anyway, uh, their power is directly countered by perks or items that are freely available to survivors. The flashlight burn burned the wraith, and around the same time, or uh, slightly afterwards, um, the hag came out, and so her traps were removable by the flashlight. But that was before they could they couldn't be avoided by crouching, and now the survivors have two methods. Of avoiding her traps which is fair but you know it's still lame more recently uh, actually obviously the ghost being completely visible to a survivor uh one if they're using object of obsession because he drops his terror radius i mean that's kind of ridiculous and that you know i guess they didn't think that through i wonder what they're going to change about that honestly 
Um, back to the list. Uh, their power doesn't do enough to disrupt survivors when it's used. Survivors afflicted with sickness from the plague aren't disrupted at all from being sick. They become broken, but with all the tools available to avoid being hit, it isn't much of a threat. They have window vaults, they have pallet loops, and they have sprint burst, and they have any number of things to avoid getting hit while still being broken. And there's no, there's nothing slowing them down. Survivors afflicted by deep wound from the Legion or borrowed time are under no threat from the condition. It's been watered down and softened so much for survivors that it's become a slight inconvenience. Deep wounds does nothing, and the devs have created it that way. It, and I don't, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't hinder them, and it should. Again, skilled killer players manage to find ways to make these hindrances work, but the difficulty to work past those hindrances that are deliberately put there by the devs takes away much of the fun of the more recent killers. I could go on, but I'm getting past the original point of this video. The devs designed the ghost to be sneaky and stalk survivors and expose and down them, but built in too many powerful counters for that tactic to be useful. The ghost can be located and knocked out of stealth very easily by survivors, and the recharge to use the power again might be too much. The 16 second time limit for the exposed status effect is too short in most instances due to the nature of a standard chase. Like before, they have window vaults, they have pallet loops, they have sprint bursts, they have dead hard, they have a crap ton of things that will wear out this timer until it's not useful. The other thing is, is that once they're stalked, once they've become exposed, the survivor gets a warning that they've been exposed. They get, they get the noise, they get the little icon on the right hand side. There is no surprise other than, oh, I have exposed, now it's time to run. Because the only way to capitalize on that is if the ghost chases them directly. If the ghost was far enough away to hide and stalk, they activate this thing, the survivor is going to run, and that distance at the start might already be too much for, this, for the ghost to catch up and capitalize on. It's so, <laughs> it's it's so tiring. The survivors need less hand holding, really. But let's go back to the ghost, shall we? Oh, and that was actually part of my little thing. In the rare instance that the ghost is actually able to expose a survivor, a decent survivor will be able to run out the timer thanks to the multiple gameplay joys of pallets and loops. So, since the power can't reliably be used the way the devs intended, how can it be used? during a chase. Going into stealth mode and crouching in some cases can be an excellent mind game tactic. This is highly dependent on the amount of solid walls in the area though. Unfortunately, the majority of loops in the game are around shorter walls that make it impossible to go into stealth mode, and some walls with holes in them that still make it easy to gain line of sight on the ghost. This means that the ghost is basically Wraith 2.0 and should be played the same way. This takes away his intended design weaknesses and alters them for a different tactic, but he's still too vulnerable to the counterplay that's available to survivors. I'd like to add that if you can keep track of survivors, or someone goes in for a rescue with borrowed time, you might be able to go into stealth mode and cancel that perk, because they won't be rescuing within your terror radius. If it does go through, it might be possible but very very difficult to go into stealth mode and stay stealth while you're keeping track of the survivor under deep wounds and then get them down um, the same way the old legion could. I'm sure players are going to find reasonably strong ways to use the ghost, but it's going to be more frustrating than fun because of the devs deliberate throttling of the ghost's capabilities, and every killer for that matter. The perks have the same problems. Many of the various killers good or even decent perks are unnecessarily weakened to make things easier for survivors. Dark Devotion is my favorite example right now. It could be a very fun perk to use if a few things were changed to make it more useful. Right now though, it has too many hoops to jump through and too many limitations. I guess the limitations are good, but the limitations are too strong to make the, the, the perk useful. For the ghost, the cooldown on Tremors and the useless nature of both I'm All Ears and Furtive Chase are the most recent examples of poor design and the obvious drought of ideas they seem to be having. They can't seem to come up with anything that would actually improve gameplay for the various killers. 
I would love to provide feedback rather than just criticism, but as we've all seen from the past releases, what our feedback actually does to improve the game? Literally nothing. And, you know, they have their stats. You know, and their stats, you know, outweigh what it would seem the vocal major ma majority. <sighs> they ignore us, and they pay attention to the stats that are obviously flawed. They're just going to do whatever they want. And there's literally nothing we can do except spend the next couple of years criticizing their choices and telling them how to fix these characters. Uh, years. Yeah, it took them two years to fix Decisive Strike. <laughs> yeah, and all that. Uh, it's so stupid. But even spending years criticizing and talking about the problems a killer has, even spending years doing that isn't going to guarantee a change. Uh, I heard the Trapper say that to me. I'm tired of their decisions. I'm tired of trying to voice reason because it just falls on deaf ears. They just, they really don't listen to us. And if you're one of those people that say, oh, well, this is just the PTB. They use it for feedback. They use it for blah, 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 blah. All right, let's see what changes by release. Let's see what they actually do this time. If they fix the one or two problems that he has right now, they're going to overcorrect and create new problems from a different direction. Watch. Watch and see. I'm probably going to buy it just to unlock um, just to unlock Tremors to try out on Freddy when he releases. That's probably the only reason. It's a $6 perk or 7 I don't know how much this stupid thing's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what they do. But anyway... Um, long story short, too long, didn't watch. The ghost is Wraith 2.0. Enjoy. Play him that way. <laughs> ah, these devs. We'll see what happens anyway. But until then, I'll see you in the fog. Yeah, the key. Look at that nonsense. <laughs>